Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you, Juan. Um, I'm David Nuremberg, the director and Leon Levy professor. It's my joy, my delight, actually a privilege to welcome you here to the Institute. Um, I share my colleagues' excitement at your presence, and I anticipate, of course, many fruitful exchanges, moments of illumination. I'm speaking not as a physicist, uh, I think you all know that, but as a historian. And it seems to me, speaking as a historian, that your field is poised at one of those peculiar moments when a gathering such as this can be uh, of significant impact on discovery and the dissemination of ideas. I say the moment is peculiar because not every field is appropriate for this kind of gathering. Some fields are already too large, too segmented. Some problems are too well understood or too far from being understood to really lend themselves to rapid progress. Admittedly, this can only be known in retrospect, but your very presence here testifies that you agree with me uh, that this is a promising moment for the quantum sciences and a moment in which the coming together of various corners of the field is especially likely to prove fruitful. If you can forgive me for getting promotional, I'm the director, so my job is always to sell the Institute. I think that the Institute for Advanced Study is a very appropriate place for such a gathering. And your presence here is uh, very much the kind of moment, the kind of field, the kind of problem, the kind of encounter that we were built for. I say appropriate in part because the history of the Institute and that of the quantum sciences writ broad are very much entangled. And I hope you'll forgive that pun, but we historians do often speak of entangled history, so it's, it's legitimate. I come by it honestly. As you all know, Einstein fled Europe in 1933, and he joined the Institute as its first professor. Vulgar biographers, I'm not going to name them, sometimes claim, have even claimed on this very stage, that Einstein did little significant work in his more than 20 years on our faculty. But when it comes to the field of the, of, quantum, of the quantum sciences, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, from the year that the, the Institute opened its doors, it became a new stage for the debates that Einstein, Bohr, and others had previously pursued at the famous Solvay conferences uh, in Belgium, beginning especially with the fifth conference in 1927. So if you saw what I just did there, I'm equating this meeting with the Solvay conference of 1927 in significance and importance. Einstein was joined at the Institute, that's promotion, was joined at the Institute by Nathan Rosen, Boris Podolsky, and many others. In, in fact, Niels Bohr was himself five times a visitor. And if 1905 is considered Einstein's annus mirabilis for its papers on special relativity, the photoelectric effect, and Brownian motion, 1935 could be considered his miracle year from the point of view of quantum information for the papers he wrote with Rosen, the particle problem in the general theory of relativity, today abbreviated as ER, and with Rosen and Podolsky, can quantum mechanical description of physical reality be considered complete, today abbreviated as EPR, both in the physical review. Now, Einstein, you all know, was disappointed in the final form of the EPR paper, and he was convinced that Bohr and others didn't grasp its full import because of its excessive formalism or the excessive formalism of its mathematical expression, which he blamed, of course, on Podolsky. But today, it's among the most cited papers ever published in the Physical Review. At the Institute, we like to mention EPR, we mention it a lot, among the many insights born of the Institute's tea time. Tea time, you won't get to experience it because it gets suspended in summer or in August, has been a daily 3 p.m. tradition since unbroken since our founding. Well, unbroken except Augusts when we don't hold it. Uh, there was some tension during World War II when sugar rationing provoked a struggle between von Neumann's computer men and the mathematicians. Uh, the mathematicians complained that the computer scientists were taking more than their fair share of the sugar. But in general, Tea Time has produced conversations and insights that we're very proud of here at the Institute because we feel that they represent the kind of facilitation of, uh, of insight that, that we're about. Another example, 
was a tea time talk in 1972 that Hugh Montgomery and Freeman Dyson had, where they were struck by the fact that the zeros of the Riemann zeta function, which are important for understanding prime numbers, seem to obey the same distribution properties as the eigenvalues of large random unitary matrices, which had been extensively studied by physicists to model the interactions within large atomic nuclei. And again, as we promote the Institute, last year, two years ago, we had a conference celebrating 50 years of insight sparked by that tea time conversation. We're fond of these tea time examples because they perform the conviction that motivates our existence. Those convictions, and I'm going to borrow Oppenheimer's words here, were that, quote, the unrestricted access to knowledge, the unplanned and uninhibited association of people for its furtherance, these are what may make a vast, complex, ever-growing, ever-changing, ever more specialized and expert technological world, nevertheless a world of human community and discovery. The Institute's intimacy, that's the end of Oppenheimer, the Institute's intimacy, its commitment to providing opportunity for scholars from all over the world and to the testing of ideas without dogmatism or ideological commitments has contributed to surprising and sometimes initially ridiculed ideas in many fields, including yours. I could offer further examples. Some from Einstein and Oppenheimer's days, such as David Bohm's so-called EPRB experiments, the B there is for Bohm, uh, naturally. We can't quite claim David Bohm as our own because he was an assistant professor at Princeton, but he was close to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was his patron and he spent a lot of time here. And Bohm proposed these, Bohm proposed these experiments that would mirror the entangled correlations in EPR and allow for the experimenter to draw firm conclusions on the issues of locality, separability, and completeness at the center of the EPR argument. I don't know if Bohm and Einstein met at tea time, but it would be good if they did. Good for the Institute's story. Others, much more recent, such as the 2013 proposal by Juan Malacena and Leonard Susskind that ER equals EPR, which has been subject to important work here over the decade, over the recent decades, uh, uh, speak to our present. But rather than attempt to offer like an adequate history of the Institute's entanglements with the quantum sciences, let me just make an obvious point. The entanglement continues. The distinctive strengths of the Institute for Advanced Study at the intersection of mathematics, physics, and computation, for example, are encouraging contributions to quantum science writ large, from developing a better understanding of the conjectured relationship between quantum gravity and quantum field theory, and how this relationship is enriched by and enriches concepts like quantum circuit complexity from the theory of computation, to the exploration of topological effects in quantum science systems, which are intimately related to the mathematics of knots and connect to promising approaches for scalable quantum computation. So we hope that our distinctive community will encourage many more contributions in the years to come as we enter the second century of the quantum sciences, which is also, as it happens, more or less the second century of the Institute's existence. Your presence here represents an important step toward the future of the field, and I dare say also towards the future of the Institute. So I join all of my colleagues in expressing my gratitude to you for being here. I have some more specific expressions of gratitude, not as long as the Academy Awards, but still substantial. To the organizers, Ignacio Sirac, Juan Malacena, Nathan Seiberg, Nadi Seiberg, Umesh Fatsirani, and Avi Vigdrasen. And last but not least, we must collectively thank the staff who have made this event possible. Michelle Sage, Lisa Fleischer, and Amanda Senker from the School of Natural Sciences, Susan Olson and the Institute's events team, and in fact, the entire staff of the Institute for Advanced Study, which has, since 1933 has done so much to nourish our possibilities for discovery. I wish you a very fruitful time here. Welcome.